The local government news roundup is proudly supported by Davidson. For 30 years, Davidson has been strengthening the local government sector by identifying and providing the people, expertise and experience that local government needs to enhance its capability, productivity and performance. Davidson is nationally recognised for its executive recruitment services and over the past four years has built a business advisory practice rapidly evolving into one of the nation's foremost and trusted local government business consultancy firms. The Davidson methodology and approach is simple. Thinking beyond now and aiming to be a valued partner with your local government, not just for the immediate project, but for the next 30 years. Speak to Justin Hanney or Seamus Scanlon to find out more or head to davidsonwp.com.au. Davidson, your future, your partner. Coming up on the Local Government News Roundup, Marybeck Council agrees to explore higher rates for landlords to fund a reduction for other ratepayers. PowerCore refuses a Ballarat Council request to meet over a controversial substation project. Two capital city mayors champion major reforms to short-stay accommodation rules. A Queensland Deputy Mayor refers herself to the state's integrity agency and a major regional council investigates a potential data breach after personal information was exposed online. Just some of the many local government stories getting our attention. It's time to round them up. Hello, I'm Chris Eddy, back with another curated selection of news from and about councils across Australia and beyond. And it's all brought to you by the Victorian Local Governance Association, the national broadcaster on all things local government, with support from Davidson, the nationally recognised local government recruitment and business advisory service. Early bird bookings open now for LG Innovate, the Artificial Intelligence Summit for the Local Government C-Suite at Perigian Beach in Queensland in September. Marybeck Council in Melbourne's Inner North has agreed to a proposal put forward by Councillor James Conlon to explore doubling rates for landlords with two or more properties, while potentially reducing rates by 50% for owner-occupiers and local businesses. Councillors supporting the proposal say it will address the housing crisis by encouraging residential property investors to sell, making more homes available to first-time buyers. Critics of the proposal say that oversimplifies the issue and they hold concerns that it could actually reduce rental supply if properties are bought by owner-occupiers. Just prior to the motion passing on a 6-5 to five vote, CEO Cathy Henderson said every effort would be made to bring a report on the proposal back to the council before the election period in September. After the meeting, the council issued a statement confirming the resolution and that legal advice would be sought in the first instance to see if the proposal can legally be implemented. Initial advice from council staff has indicated that it is unlikely that doubling rates for property investors with two or more properties would fund a halving of rates for other ratepayers. PowerCore has declined to meet with Ballarat Council and residents regarding a future substation site in Ballarat East because it says it would give residents false hope. PowerCore plans to proceed with the $30 million substation project despite opposition from residents and the council. The council has advocated for a land swap and invited state ministers to meet at the site, but PowerCore said the swap would be too expensive and declined the meeting. PowerCore has offered a $2 million community benefits package, including direct neighbour payments and funding for rooftop solar. City of Melbourne's council has rejected a plan to give a South Yarra apartment block known as Mottstone heritage protection, according to a report from The Age this week. The decision came after residents expressed concerns that the protection would prevent them from selling the old building to developers. Despite the building being classified as significant to South Yarra's heritage, it has now been categorised as non-contributory, as the council determined that the higher threshold for demolition should not apply. The Heritage Review, with recommended status for 16 properties and two new precincts, will now go to the Planning Minister, Sonia Kilkenny, for approval. 
Regional Livestock Exchange has decided to stop operating at the Camperdown sale yards and will terminate its lease on the council-owned property. The last sale day is expected to be on June the 25th. The closure, according to Karangamite Shire Council CEO David Ray, is disappointing but not unexpected and will not significantly impact the council's revenue. The future use of the site will be investigated by the council, considering prudent investment and maximising community benefit. While Mr Ray declined to speculate on the future of the site, the Warrnambool Standard reported that it is unlikely the council would take over the operation. Moorable Shire Council has decided to withdraw its membership from the Committee for Ballarat. The withdrawal was flagged in a notice of motion from Councillor Tom Sullivan in May and officers had proposed that membership be included in the Council's annual review of memberships. The Moorable News reported that Councillor Sullivan believes the interests of Moorable don't align with the Committee for Ballarat. Other reasons cited included opposition to the Committee's support for the Transmission Line project. The decision will save an annual membership fee of $4,600. And the mayors of Victoria's 10 largest regional cities have met in Shepparton this week and committed to continued collaboration on driving investment, managing population growth, improving livability and addressing climate change. The cities, which include Ballarat, Bendigo and Geelong, will work with federal and state governments to address housing shortages, attract new industries and ensure infrastructure keeps pace with population growth. The cities collectively house over 800,000 people and contribute to 10% of Victoria's economy. Now for more Council News in Brief, the City of Ballarat is preparing for the introduction of a new food organics and garden organics curbside collection service in 2025. The service will provide kitchen caddies and liners to about 51,000 residential households for collecting food scraps. The rollout is subject to the city securing a suitable FOGO processor and implementing a community education campaign. Hume City Council will inquire with Vic Roads about the maintenance of the historic Hume and Hovel Monument in Buller, which is currently in a dilapidated state. The monument, erected in 1924, commemorates the 1824 expedition of Hamilton Hume and William Hovel. The Star Weekly reported that the council is considering involving volunteers who maintain nearby gardens in the monument's upkeep with the hope of state assistance. And Moorable Shire has received a petition opposing the renaming of the Elaine Recreation Reserve to the Ron Reed Recreation Reserve, a change which was proposed by a previous petition. The new petition, supported by the Elaine Cricket Club and local residents, argues that naming the reserve after one person is not fair to the many who have volunteered there. The council voted to receive the petition and has requested a report on the matter. You're listening to the Local Government News Roundup, episode number 349, recorded on Friday the 14th of June 2024. Brought to you by the Victorian Local Governance Association with support from Davidson Search and Advisory. The next in the series of global executive panels from the VLGA and LGIU is coming up on Thursday the 27th of June on the topic of resetting relationships between levels of government. Join a panel of leaders from Australia and the UK for a Q&A discussion on maximising engagement and ensuring councils can be heard on the big issues affecting their communities. The online panel starts at 5.30pm Australian Eastern Standard Time. Registrations and details on the events page of the VLGA website. Now for the National Roundup, starting in New South Wales, City of Sydney Lord Mayor Clover Moore is advocating for major reforms in the short-term rental sector, including a 90-day annual cap and a 10% levy on all bookings, with the revenue to be used for social and affordable housing. The Guardian reported that the city's research has revealed that thousands of properties on platforms like Airbnb have been operating without valid registrations. The research also found that the current 180-day cap for listings was not deterring long-term rentals from switching to Airbnb and stays listings and that enforcement of policies was insufficient. More on short-stay accommodation reforms from another of Australia's major cities coming up. The fallout continues after a state government decision to reclaim $36 million in funding granted to Hornsby Shire Council by the former New South Wales government. At a general meeting of Hornsby Shire Council this week, Mayor Philip Ruddick AO has slammed the government for its, quote, inexplicable decision 
to resend the funding for the development of a much-needed recreational facility at Westley Park. He's called on the community to voice their disappointment and remind the New South Wales Premier and relevant ministers of the many local teams, athletes, clubs and generations of weekend sports players who will see their community and aspirations suffer a loss as a result of the broken promise. Meanwhile, Inner West Council has welcomed the state government's decision and called for the reclaimed funds to be reallocated to councils that were disadvantaged by the funding scheme. Mayor Darcy Byrne said merged councils like Inner West and Canterbury-Bankstown were unfairly prevented from applying for grants and that the communities who were ripped off should receive some of the benefit. A proposed 3.5% increase in remuneration for the forthcoming year for councillors at Griffith City Council has been rejected. They will leave their remuneration unchanged. The Area News reported that a motion to lift councillor salaries by the allowed amount was rejected at Tuesday's meeting, with some councillors citing the council's dire financial position as the reason. Willoughby City Council, in partnership with Echo Realty, is offering 13 affordable homes to key workers with low to moderate incomes, with an additional 12 units to be available from August. The homes are part of the Council's affordable housing strategy and are located on the site of the former Channel 9 building. Meanwhile, in response to increasing housing affordability challenges, Shoalhaven City Council is preparing an updated affordable housing strategy. It will outline how the council will improve the supply of affordable housing and explore ways to make homes more affordable. The council has been implementing actions from its 2017 affordable housing strategy, including adjusting planning controls and increasing the supply of social and affordable housing. The updated strategy will include measurable actions and proposed housing affordability targets. Parramatta's bike paths are set to undergo a significant expansion with the endorsement of the Parramatta Bike Plan 2024. The plan aims to deliver nearly 20 kilometres of new bike paths by 2027, focusing on safety, accessibility and improved facilities. The goal is to increase bike transportation to at least 5% of all work trips and 10% of those ending in the Parramatta CBD by 2043. And Upper Lachlanshire Council is celebrating after receiving the Community Development Award at the Local Government Excellence Awards. The award was for their initiative of inviting drag storyteller Betty Confetti for a rainbow story time despite facing threats and backlash. The event was a success, recording the highest attendance of all specialised story time events. The Council continues to celebrate Pride Month with events throughout the Shire and at Council Libraries. Now for some news out of Queensland and a photo scandal at Toowoomba Regional Council took a surprising turn this week when Deputy Mayor Rebecca Von Hoff announced she had referred herself to the Office of the Independent Assessor. The move followed criticism for her involvement in a scandal where a compromising photo of a colleague was circulated on social media. Councillor Von Hoff admitted to taking the photo of colleague Kerry Shine asleep during a meeting, but denies sharing it outside of council chambers. In what the Toowoomba Chronicle called an unusual move, Mayor Jeff MacDonald has issued a statement signed by all councillors saying that no further comment would be made on the matter. It's understood Councillor Von Hoff phoned Councillor Shine last week to apologise for her part in the scandal. She said on social media that the OIA process would unfold according to legislation and she would accept the outcomes, including any judgment. City of Brisbane ratepayers will face an above inflation rate rise of 3.8% next financial year under Lord Mayor Adrian Schrinner's first budget since re-election. The $4 billion budget also includes plans to regulate short-stay accommodation with a permit scheme and an infrastructure spend of almost $1 billion. The proposed permit changes for short-stay accommodations require state government approval and would require owners to nominate a property manager and prove they have planning permission. The Courier-Mail reported an estimated 424 properties operating in low-density suburbs were unlikely to receive a development or local law permit and will have to return to the long-term market or face fines under the new scheme. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Dr. Miranda Melcher, host of the Just Access podcast. We bring you amazing interviews from the world of human rights and access to justice, from Dunja Miatovic, Council of Europe Commissioner for Human Rights, to Liz Evenson, International Justice Director at Human Rights Watch. Whether you're a law student or legal professional, human rights activists, or just want to stay up to date on what's happening with the world, 
The Just Access podcast is your go-to for inspirational stories and fascinating discussions about the state of human rights today. Search for Just Access on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Moreton Bay Regional Council has launched an investigation into a potential data breach after accidentally publishing private user information on its website. ABC News has reported that the information included names, addresses, contact details and details about council investigations. The breach was reported by users who discovered their personal information and that of other people they know on the council's customer request portal. The council's third-party provider is investigating the breach and some customer functionality on the website is currently unavailable. The number of people affected and the time frame for fixing the issue is unknown. Townsville City Council is intensifying efforts to combat the city's largest yellow crazy ant infestation thanks to $12.8 million in funding from the federal government. The council has created a dedicated team to tackle the biosecurity issue with aerial treatments planned over several days in various suburbs. The council will also use helicopters, foot offices and drones to spread about 20,000 kilograms of specialised ant bait. Now to South Australia, Adelaide City Council has endorsed support for the city's appeal, a campaign which encourages Australia to sign the 2021 Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. The treaty aims to ban the use, production and stockpiling of nuclear weapons. The city's appeal has been endorsed so far by 45 Australian councils. The treaty has 93 international signatories, but Australia is not among them, according to a report from InDaily. The city of Charles Sturt has responded to privacy concerns about the doors of some public toilets in the city. The concerns relate to an old design intended to reduce unsavoury behaviour through passive surveillance. The council says it's undertaking an immediate audit and will address privacy and functionality issues as required. Temporary measures have been put in place, including the installation of boarding and screens. And in Western Australia, Perth Metro local governments are struggling to balance their budgets against a cost of living crisis with proposed rate increases ranging from 3 to 8%, according to a report from WA Today. Factors such as waste disposal, staff pay rises and other operational costs have contributed to the increases. Some councils like Joondalup and Perth have lower rate rises due to separating bin collection fees from regular rates. An average rate rise of 4.4% has been proposed across across 22 of 31 metro local governments. And Mandura City Council has presented a proposal to offer rebates to residents for the purchase of security equipment. It has developed a draft strategy that includes the rebate proposal, as well as responses to opportunistic crime in hotspot locations and increasing the number of private security cameras registered with the city. The proposal also allows vulnerable residents to register with WA Police's safe and found database, according to a report from Perth Now. The scheme is estimated to cost $50,000 thousand dollars per year and i have yet more to tell you about in a big week for news in south australia the district council of mount remarkable has appointed martin borgas as acting ceo after the departure of sam johnson for the ceo position at the city of launceston in tasmania mr borgas is the former ceo of karunda east murray and has worked previously with the local government association of south australia Bruce Scott, OAM, who has been interim CEO of Queensland's Murway Shire Council since last August, has been offered an extension to his tenure in the role to enable a thorough recruitment process for a permanent appointment. Mr Scott, who is a former Mayor of Baku Shire, will stay in the role for a further 12 months from the 1st of July. Augusta Margaret Rivers Chief Bushfire Control Officer David Holland has been recognised in the 2024 King's Birthday Honours List for his outstanding commitment to protecting the community. He's been awarded an Australian Fire Service Medal, the highest honour for a member of an Australian Fire Service. The Local Government Association of South Australia has launched a regional housing toolkit to help regional councils unlock new housing opportunities and ease pressure on housing availability and affordability. The LGA says the new toolkit provides guidance on building an evidence-based business case for seeking investors and funding for housing. And the District Council of Coober PD is seeking an experienced leader to be its next Chief Executive Officer, reporting to a team of three administrators. Applications are invited 
provided through MacArthur by the 1st of July. The Local Government News Roundup is proudly brought to you by the Victorian Local Governance Association with support from Davidson Search and Advisory. Join us in October for a unique global online event featuring a group of visionary civic leaders from across the globe, sharing strategies on tackling toxicity, bridging divides and renewing civic culture. I'm delighted to be co-hosting this event with Diane Kalen sucra author, speaker and former senior local government executive. It takes place on the morning of Friday the 11th of October in Australia, which is the afternoon or evening of the 10th of October across North America and the UK. Act now to reserve your free space at Tackling Toxicity, Cultivating Civility, supported by the Victorian Local Governance Association. Head to kalenacademy.com forward slash summit to register and find out more. It's time now for the Global Roundup, some of the stories that have caught our eye from across the world in the last few days. In the UK, firstly, government commissioners appointed to Woking Borough Council, which declared bankruptcy in June last year, are set to remain in place until at least 2028. Commissioners Tony Redmond, Carol Cully and Mervyn Greer could receive up to a combined £2.5 million during their tenure, according to a BBC News report. The council is responsible for meeting those costs. A former employee of Aberdeen City Council has admitted to embezzling over £1 million over a period of 17 years. Michael Patterson exploited his position as a council tax and recovery team leader to issue council tax refunds and alter payee account details to transfer money to himself. BBC News reported that the scam was discovered when a colleague noticed a large refund made under Patterson's username. Patterson, who started stealing to pay off debts and spent the money on personal expenses, was remanded in custody and faces a possible custodial sentence. The council has since reviewed and strengthened its financial controls and processes. In New Zealand, Invercargill Mayor Nobby Clark is facing another code of conduct complaint confirmed by the council and lodged by an external party. This follows a previous complaint filed by City Councillors Rhea Bond and Ian Pottinger after Councillor Clark's controversial use of a racial slur during a satirical news show. The Mayor's conduct during the interview has been described as reprehensible. Both complaints are currently under investigation. Christchurch City Council has begun its search for a new chief executive following the resignation of its former CEO, Dawn Baxendale, in November. The press reports that recruitment agency Sheffield has been appointed to assist in filling the role. Interim CEO Mary Richardson will continue in the position until the recruitment process is complete. From the US, Chicago City Council has approved a $50 million settlement for four men known as the Marquette Park Four who were wrongfully convicted of a 1995 double murder. The men spent 20 years in prison before their convictions were vacated. CBS News reported that the settlement resolves four separate federal civil lawsuits brought by the men against the city. The city will pay $21 million of the settlement with the city's insurance company covering the remaining $29 million. From Canada, Hamilton Councillor John Paul Danko violated the city's code of conduct by publicly criticising two YWCA Women of Distinction award winners on social media, according to the city's integrity commissioner. Despite Councillor Danko's subsequent removal of the post and an apology, the commissioner found his comments fell below acceptable public discourse. However, CBC News reported that no penalty will be imposed, as Councillor Danko has already faced negative public reaction and there was no indication of malicious intent. And finally, in another broadening perhaps of what you'd expect councils to be involved in, Tokyo City Hall in Japan is developing a dating app to encourage marriage and childbirth in response to the country's declining marriage and birth rates. The app is expected to launch later this year. It may require identity confirmation and proof of income. The government is also offering cash incentives for families with children and supporting childcare facilities to address the issue. 
And that's the podcast for today, Friday the 14th of June 2024, brought to you by the Victorian Local Governance Association with support from Davidson Search and Advisory. This has been episode number 349. You can find the links to the stories referenced in the episode and a full transcript at lgnewsroundup.com. While you're there, check out the latest breaking news updates and learn how you can support the Roundup by becoming a subscriber through a small monthly contribution, which you can cancel at any time. The Roundup is recorded in the city of Greater Geelong, Victoria, on the land of the Wadawurrung people of the Kulin Nation. I'll be back with more very soon. Until next time, thanks for listening and bye for now.